it was on about an hour and a half before I finally finished that call. So uh, I apologize. I kept saying, hey, I really got to go live at 1130. Anyway, so I am now here and I'm going to keep this short today. I uh, just want to say thank goodness in central Arkansas that we have a little bit of sunshine today. Um, I know we had a great weekend. Too many people were out on the trails and that kind of thing. I took a drive around. Um, I got a little stir crazy on Sunday, took a drive around the lake or the lake, the river. <laughs> I used to live in Chicago, so there's a lake there. Um, I, uh, I saw people playing volleyball and that kind of thing. I just want to remind people that the social distancing really is about physical distancing and playing volleyball and getting your sweat all over a ball, that kind of thing. Not really all that helpful in uh, this time of trying to be careful with the coronavirus, COVID-19 out there, especially for people like me um, who are immune compromised. Uh, I take immune suppressant medication every single day. So please be mindful of, of the people that you're around. Um, I haven't been around humans for a little while now, so uh, you might see some funny, funny things come out of my mouth. But or hear some funny things coming out of my mouth. I'm just gonna to talk to you about a couple of different things that have come up from clients calling in, um, you know, potential clients who are asking questions about visitation. And, uh, and then I'm gonna put in like a little brief note about the stimulus package that came out recently. So the, um, the question that, that keeps coming up from people who are divorced or separated and have some kind of visitation agreement with their co-parent has been about you know what what's happening during this time of social distancing and a lot of it has centered around what if i think my co-parent doesn't social distance as well as i do and the concern for your children is valid i understand that um but if you don't think that your co-parent social distances as well as you do, that doesn't mean that you can violate court orders. So keep in mind that um, that, that there's not going to really necessarily be um, a lot of grace for people who say that they're not going to let their kids go visit their dad or their mom right now because you know they're a smoker or they like to go out to bingo or whatever it might be. Uh, I don't know why I threw bingo in there, but whatever it might be. So um, there's actually been, even though the courts are closed down right now and not having hearings that are in person, meaning that you know you can't necessarily get divorced or have a lot of things in person right now, there are some judges that are doing video conferencing for essential hearings. And you know, keep in mind, that's not going to be, you know, a, a, a tiny little question that you have that they're going to uh, that you're going to be able to get in the judge uh, in front of the judge for. But there has been some recent um, kind of uh, issue. There have been some recent recent issues, and they've been brought in front of courts um, in these video hearings about this social distancing thing. And again, the judges are not unless you have some really solid proof that your co-parent is taking the kids out to some place that shouldn't be open and letting them, you know, I don't know, lick things. I don't, I don't, I don't have a good answer for an example there, but uh, you know, you really have to follow your court order. So if your co-parent gets the kids every other weekend or for a full week right now, whatever it might be, uh, you really, you know, need to, to adhere to that consequences are going to be if you decide that you don't want to have your kids you know go for their regular visitation the consequences to that are going to be that you could be um held what's in called contempt of court and be asked to show up in court for a hearing to explain to the judge why you didn't follow the rules that the judge said you had to follow when it came to visitation um you're I mean, I can't really say one way or the other whether or not you're going to win in that scenario, um, but judges are not going to be super friendly to people who don't allow their kids to have visitation because of some reason that is not provable. Um, it's, it's just kind of that time right now. Uh, we're all a little bit stressed. We're all a little bit hypersensitive and, you know, your kids' health is very important and you should keep that in the forefront of your minds. 
but you can't really stop co-parenting during this time. So uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to comment here on the video and you know, we'll do our best to answer, but we don't really have many solid answers right now. It's, uh, I have some friends who do family law in other states and uh, one of my friends is actually um, in the Northeast. They're having a, a court training on, a, on you know, what's going on right now. And I know that's one of the questions that they're gonna talk about on Friday. So once I hear some information on that, if there's anything that we can kind of, you know, look, uh, look to, then we'll certainly let you know. I do have a couple of, uh, of comments here. If there's supervised visitation and, and someone's moved to a different state, I don't know specifically the details about that supervised visitation. I don't know if there's a specific supervisor that, uh, that is required um, if you have already agreed on somebody. <clears throat> there's nothing, uh, you know, it really honestly depends on what your order says, what the specific supervised visitation might be. Those are questions if you, you know, if you want to call and set an appointment with us, we can certainly have a conversation. If you have an attorney that you've used in the past, you might want to reach out to them to answer some questions. It's something that I really can't give you specific answers or advice on because I don't know anything about what the documents say and that and that kind of information if you know i'd check to see if your supervised visitation order if there's anything in there that says um you know if there's any language about moving out of state or moving a certain amount of miles away you know how that affects visitation when we draft when we write documents here at my lawyer we do our very best to kind of put every possible um, scenario in, including whether or not one parent moves a certain amount of miles away. It doesn't even have to be necessarily to the next state. It's just how many miles away. Even if your court order was here in Arkansas, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just needs to, you know, you need to look and see if there's any language in there about moving a certain distance away and how that affects visitation. You may, maybe a situation where you need to go back to court and get that modified since he lives far away, he or she um, lives far away now. So it's it's just kind of, um, it's, you know, your, your questions are very specific and it's a little bit hard to get into answering or helping um, without, uh, without getting some more detail. Um, I'm gonna move on just for a minute and talk a little bit about the stimulus package that came out that the president signed recently. I think a lot of people have heard about this $1,200, um, this $1,200 check that we're all gonna get if we're single, you know, depending on if you make up to $75,000 or if you make more, if you're single or married couple, uh, you'll get more if you have children that are dependents on you. That only from what I, and I'm take take what I'm saying as I'm not a financial person, uh, so I'm not giving you advice necessarily on what the language is. I'm just saying um, that uh, from what I've read and what I've heard people say who have more knowledge about this than than I do, if your children are dependents and they are under the age of 17, so they have to be 16 and under, then you'll get extra money for your dependents, your children there. If your children are claimed as dependents, but they're 17, 18, 20, if they're in college, neither one of you gets money for that. Uh, don't, you know, don't take that as, as the honest truth. It's just from what I understand and from what I've heard other people explain it to me. One thing I wanna mention in relation to families is that if you or your co-parent are behind in child support, if one of you owes child support to the other one, and you are behind in child support, whether you're getting you know, your wages garnished or there's an action with the Office of Child Support Enforcement or whatever it might be, you will not be getting that, that full $1,200 check. Uh, that's one of the few things there. Um, if you owe money to the government for other reasons, like um, maybe you know, your student loans or your mortgage or whatever, whatever it might, like past tax dues, you know, that kind of thing, that doesn't affect whether or not you get your stimulus check, but child support does. Um, the Arkansas is a very strict state when it comes to child support, but just in general, there's with all the states, there's a very big incentive for the states to be uh, involved and in making sure child support is paid because otherwise the state has to pay for those children. 
So in, in many situations, so just know that if you, or if you know that your co-parent is just is behind in child support, that's going to affect their stimulus payment. So we're a little bit longer than I expected to be. And uh, Nicole, thank you for the comments. I'll comment after I get off the lives, I'll uh, respond to your comments in writing as well. But if you have questions, you know, please feel free to post them here, um, you know, throughout the, the day and the next week. And we'll be back, Brooke and I, together next week. Or actually, she might be back by herself. But either way, we'll be back here next Tuesday at 1130. And everybody stay safe. Stay home. Please do not get out and, you know, mingle about and spread your germs. This is pretty serious. And uh, we need to kind of take it seriously. We don't need to, you know, panic and none of that stuff. But we just need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and protecting the general population of people who are getting sick and who are dying from this. So thank you so much. And you guys have a great rest of your week and enjoy the sunshine for those of us at least who have it today. Have a good one.